As we get closer to Election Day, we're seeing more and more suppression efforts in several states. And President Trump is, of course, up to, well, his usual. President, he's calling for his supporters to, quote, monitor the process as an invitation, many read, to voter intimidation and even armed Trump supporters being outside of polling places. But three times as many Democrats are expected to vote by mail than Republicans. And yesterday, the eight-person Supreme Court made it harder for people who vote by mail in, for example, South Carolina to have their votes counted. Absentee ballots in that state, they will now need to be witnessed, a second signature sensibly to ward off voter fraud, but ballots without one, they won't be counted. And that could matter in a state where Trump leads by only five and the Senate race there is virtually tied. Florida, state's voter registration system, it crashed yesterday, the final day for people to sign up, so they have extended registration, now closing tonight, just as this program will be going off the air. Now, Florida has also found a way to keep most of the state's 1.4 million felons from voting despite a state constitutional amendment in 2018 that specifically allowed it. Felons there must pay off any fines or court costs before they can vote. And that move from Republican lawmakers in a key state where Biden currently leads. The election, it could also flip the balance of Florida's House delegation, which could matter a lot if the Electoral College cannot declare a winner and the presidential election goes to the House. To Pennsylvania, where the state allowing absentee ballots to be counted three days after Election Day if the ballots are postmarked by November 3rd. State courts upheld that law, which Pennsylvania Republicans are now appealing all the way to the Supreme Court. Pennsylvania, as you know, a swing state, one where Biden leads by six and a half point in most of the averages, and a new Monmouth poll has him up by as many as 12. Pennsylvania has an evenly divided House delegation as of now. Now, reports this week from two key states, Ohio and Texas, where governors are limiting the number of drop boxes for absentee ballots. To me, this is beyond insane. Texas lowering it to one per county, which can be a major problem given how large the counties in Texas are. It is tighter than expected presidential races in the Lone Star State, and their Senate race there could tighten if the trends continue. And right now, Ohio, thought to be a safe Republican state, is leading ever so slightly for Biden, so any restrictions on voting there could alter the outcome. And it could happen anywhere. Republicans prepping to challenge any and every absentee ballot they can, which has already impacted these elections as more than half a million absentee ballots were thrown out for one reason or another during this year's primaries. I want to bring in our guest, Congressman G.K. Butterfield. He's a Democrat from North Carolina. And the subcommittee he serves on just wrapped up a hearing on combating false information about voting. And to me, I thought it was telling Congressman, that not a single Republican participated that was a member of the committee. Uh, what does that tell you? Well, not a single Republican showed up for our subcommittee hearing today, and that's very disappointing, but not surprising. Um, uh, Republicans need to own up to the fact that voter suppression is taking place all across the country, and President Trump and, and all of his Republican uh, colleagues are a part of the problem. Voter suppression is nothing new in North Carolina. We have witnessed it for years and years, but this year it seems to be intensifying. Not only are we bracing ourselves for, for intimidation and, and tactics that, that are intended to discourage people from voting, but we're also facing the whole notion of misinformation. Uh, misinformation is just running rapid, and it's going to get worse, uh, not just from foreign actors, but from, from domestic actors as well. And we've got to stop the spread of misinformation, uh, and all of us have an obligation to do that. Uh, bad actors can, can ruin an election. They can destroy a democracy. Uh, they can mislead voters, confuse voters. And so we all have, have an obligation. States have an obligation. Federal government has an obligation. All of us have an obligation to make sure that we have a full, fair, and free election. You know, there's more than enough to worry about as it relates to voting this year. But I'm curious, given the menu of the misinformation you talked about, the suppression, um, uh, the intimidation at the polls with a consent decree having expired, and also the possibility that anything and everything is possible with this president in terms of him deciding on election night to declare it early or to say um, no more counting the ballots that have come in. What worries you the most as we're now literally less than a month from Election Day? we're encouraging people to do is to do the early in-person voting because on election night, uh, the, the election will not be decided. We will not know on November the 3rd who wins the election because only half of the voters 
will be voting early or on election day. The other half will be voting by absentee ballot, and it's going to take several days to count those absentee ballots. And we can just envision uh, Donald Trump and the Republicans declaring victory on election day while the votes have yet to be finalized. And so uh, that's what Trump has been doing over the last few weeks, trying to sow cords of discontent uh, among, among the voters to, to uh, set the table for challenging the outcome of the election. Uh, we, we are bracing ourselves for it, but we want the American people to know that no one is going to interfere with your right to vote. There's a lot going on, as always, on the Hill, but a few things today that I'm, I, I want to get your reaction to. One is the Fed chairman, uh, Chairman Powell, said, and I'm quoting him directly, we could have tragic consequences without a stimulus sooner than later. And the president just said uh, within the hour that, yeah, I'm not going to touch this thing till after the election, after I win. Put it in your constituents' uh, voice. Can they really wait here uh, another month or so without the checks coming? I got the news break a few moments ago. I was on a conference call with Speaker Nancy Pelosi when the news came out, and it was so disappointing because uh, Secretary Mnuchin and Mark Meadows and Nancy Pelosi were that close to a deal. Uh, the only thing that was separating them, it was reported, was state and local support. But uh, eviction protection and rental assistance and all of the other things were, were coming together. Direct payments to the American people and protecting uh, people and providing uh, health care and, and PPEs and all of the other things that we must do. And just to pull the plug on that arbitrarily uh, tells me that the Republicans are in disarray in the White House. Uh, I don't know what the unemployed and hardworking families will do between now and the election. Uh, I can tell you that Donald Trump is is uh, out of control. He must be defeated on November, November the 3rd, and we must get a new direction uh, in this country because right now, uh, poor people are hurting. And I know nothing shocks anymore, but I got to tell you, Congressman, when I saw him do what he did on the balcony last night and tell Americans basically there's nothing to worry about for COVID the same day that we passed 210,000 dead Americans, did, did it shock even you? Uh, it was shocking. Uh, it was absolute. Uh, the president is delusional. Uh, for him to walk out of Walter Reed Hospital and, and return to, to the White House and to, and to conduct that publicity stunt that he did on the Truman balcony uh, suggests to me that uh, he may even have early stages of dementia. This no sane, rational human being conducts himself that way, especially someone who's the leader of the free world. And you see what happened today when he, when he canceled the negotiations on COVID. You see what happened to the stock market this afternoon. It just went plummeting. Uh, we, must, we must really pay attention to this administration and know that November the 3rd uh, will not only determine the next four years, but the next generation. Congressman, I appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And up next, as President Trump continues to downplay COVID and tell people to basically just get over it, I will be speaking with a woman who's been incapacitated by the virus for now six months and counting. Trust me, you'll want to hear what she has to say about the president.